Good afternoon, good morning, good evening from wherever you're listening uh, or watching to this watching this replay on YouTube. Um, thank you for joining us for Icon UK Around the Table. Um, this is our monthly webinar that we do every month. Um, it normally happens on the second Thursday of every month at 3 p.m. UK time. Um, realize that that is confusing around this time of year because of daylight savings and everything changing in different places at different times. But well done for making it um, to a live recording if you're here, or well done for catching up with the recording if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, my name is Tim Clark. I am the chairman of um, Icon UK. I'm also a services director at a business partner called BCC. Um, I have to thank BCC for their um, letting us use their WebEx event center this month um, so that we can host more people um, and that we can record this and, and put this on YouTube simpler. So thank you, BCC, for that. Um, this month we have a special edition, um, a very special edition um, that's gone out on several channels to lots of different people, uh, and it's good to see so many of you here this afternoon. Um, we have... Uh, special edition all around the announcement that IBM and HCL have made recently. Um, I'm not going to say any more about it other than pass it over to my uh, one of my co-presenters this, this afternoon. That would be Christopher Moore, um, who you will be, regular listeners will be familiar with. Um, Chris and Leon are here to tell us all about the announcements that IBM and HCL have made. Um, and without further ado, Chris Moore, over to you, sir. Thanks, Tim. Well, good day, everyone. Um, if you haven't heard the announcement, that's okay. We're going to play catch up. So this announcement um, is really the next part of the story uh, for the Domino portfolio moving forward. Uh, IBM and HCL have, have entered into a strategic partnership to jointly invest in the, the future roadmap for Notes and Domino, as well as Verse and Same Time. The partnership is to, uh, moving forward is to build um, to build out a roadmap and deliver on that roadmap with the intent to release uh, a Domino 10 next year, Domino version 10 in 2018. Um, as I mentioned, it's for Domino notes first and same time, but, it's, but that includes the public cloud, hybrid cloud, as well as the on-premises release as well. Uh, could you go to the next slide, please, Tim? So, um, and if you could cycle through the um, the animations would be great. Um, so what's the intent for Domino 10? What, what are the goals? That Those goals are, are in three parts. Um, one, to, to drive future developments um, and be able to do that at speed. Um, also to energize the community, because we've got a great community, as well as energize the, the offerings that are available um, uh, for customers and customers using, um, but also to protect investments that our clients have made. And there are lots in the tens of thousands globally. Um, in terms of the ex what's going on in terms of the relationship moving forward and what, how does that partnership affect that, in short, it doesn't. The intent is to maintain continuity and avoid any disruption to client relationships, and that includes the, uh, any support that's going on as well as the sales process. So customers and business partners will continue to engage with IBM as per usual. And we've also announced the Domino 2025 Jam. If you could go to the next slide, please, Tim. Um, the goal of the, the Domino Jam 2025 is to, is to increase uh, client and lab advocacy, but also to allow a, a channel to provide feedback on future, sorry, to provide feedback on future updates, as well as what the direction is going to be moving forward um, for the Domino product family. That's all going to be done by using a combination, a combination of interactive face-to-face -face workshops, um, as well as virtual events that drive um, participation, um, uh, as well as deliver events via the user groups and any meetings that, that's necessary to help drive those conversations. Uh, we are going to be seeing dates for those pretty soon. They're going to be run in multiple cities all over the world. We will let you know. We will be publicizing them in a big way. So do listen out for that. So this is all really exciting. Uh, I'm personally quite excited um, after working with Domino for, for only 10 years, but this is really awesome and really looking forward to, to discussions that are gonna be had and also to see what the what's gonna, uh, what Domino and Notes at the same time and Verse are gonna be looking like in the near, medium and, and in the distant future. Um, because we have a long plan for this. It's going to be great. So we're looking forward to new innovations, new opportunities, and, and see what's going to happen. Um, so um, I'm going to pass it back to you, Tim, to uh, get on with the, uh, with the panel discussions. 
Fantastic. Thank you for that very brief but informative information. Um, <laughs> so that was a great download. Um, so I would encourage everybody who's interested in this to get involved in the Domino 2025 Jam um, if you haven't already signed up and if the, the web page is working, because I tried this morning and it was broken for some reason, or maybe that was just my browser. Um, but um, yeah, if, if you haven't signed up already, do sign up to that and do get involved. Um, and, you know, we'll we'll make the best of this if we all get involved and all have our say. Um, it seems to be that some of this is going to be a democracy, so join in if you want your voice to be heard. So we are very um, lucky to have uh, two esteemed people from IBM with us this afternoon. We have Barry Rosen, who's offering manager, and we've dragged him out of a, um, I, um, Barry, am I allowed to say? You might be on, yeah, okay, so we've dragged Barry out of a, um, a workshop for the roadmap, um, and this is a three-day workshop that the offering, managing, and the offering managers and product managers are in this week, so that's exciting news that these guys are working on this already. Um, so, Barry, we've dragged him out of that to do this, so thank you very much, Barry, for joining us. Um, it's a pleasure to have you with us again because Barry's been to Icon UK Live, as it is, um, in London, so yes, Pleased to have you with us virtually today. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. And uh, my good personal friend and colleague from years ago, Uffi Sorensen, joins us. Are you in Denmark today or where are you, Uffi? I am on the northernmost tip of Denmark in Skagen, as far up north as you can get on the mainland European continent. Awesome. It, it's always exciting talking to Uffi because you never know whereabouts on the planet he's going to be calling you from. So I love talking to Uffi um, because it, it's an education in geography of nothing else. Um, so My Uffi, pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> Uffi and Barry are here to take your questions and I see a bunch of questions coming in to um, the, the Q&A app. If you do want to raise a hand and tell us that you want to ask a question directly, we will be taking questions uh, from the lines. I will unmute your line if I can make this stuff work. Um, I believe there's a button for you to raise your hand. If I don't get this right, then um, sack me or, or find a new juggler. We'll see how we can get on with this. So one of the questions that, go on. So, so Tim, this is Sufi. Can I just just one expand on one thing that, that Chris talked about Please on the Domino 2025 jam. Um, I, I know that, that uh, a lot of you have already been registering. I do not know why that jam registration link doesn't work right this minute. We'll find out. Uh, puzzling. Yeah, that's been raised to marketing. Yeah, They're yes. aware of it. But I think I have another one slightly more obscure, but that works. I'll share that a few minutes later in the chat. Um, so, so never mind that. But the point is that a lot of you have, have gone to register already, uh, and, and we know and we're taking action on it. Uh, we are building a number of, of really like design thinking sessions around this. That's part of what Barry is preparing right now, is the input for those sessions, uh, where we will in, in, invite uh, a number of people face to face, and we'll also run some virtual sessions, and the announcement of the precise schedule and venues will come out imminently. Uh, the idea was to, I mean, it, we don't want to get it done as quickly as possible, but I would not assume that we will publish any dates or venues or specific invitations. You'll, 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 you'll be invited to, to some event. Uffi, can you speak up? People are having trouble hearing you. Yep, I, ooh. Oh, that's much better. Okay, good. Uh, so so, so uh, we will come back and assume that you within the next, uh, at most 10 days, uh, you will know much more about venues and locations and, and, and you will see invitations to the uh, design thinking sessions around Domino 25. Domino 2025, yeah? 2025, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome, brilliant. Yep. So one question we have in already is from our good friend and lifetime champion, T.O. Hesselman, uh, and he's asked, is the jam for post Domino 10 or already includes Domino 10? <clears throat> Who wants to answer that one? You want me to take that one, Sophie? Sure. 
Sure. Yeah, so the the way that we're going to kind of approach this from an offer management perspective is going into the jams, we obviously have an idea of what we want to do for Domino 10. It's going to be a validation and prioritization type of exercise, mostly, fake, mostly focused on Domino 10, but this is, you know, open to things that are, you know, that we want that are beyond that as well. So if there are items that come up that we can't fit into the 10 time frame, then we can put that in the beyond 10 time frame as well. The other thing that we want it to do is from an offering management perspective, we don't want this to be a session about what features you guys want. We kind of already know that for the last you know 20 years we've heard. We've uh, been a little bit vocal about that, right? Yeah. You know, so I don't want someone to be like, where is this feature or why is this feature or when is this particular feature coming? This is more about validation of themes and in terms of where are we investing in the product going forward? You know, where is the emphasis uh, going forward? Are we, uh, you, you know, I think from a, long, from a long time we've been very male focused and our investment has always been very heavily weighted on the male side and, and I think Domino 10 is going to see that swing to the application side. So we're just going to be looking for validation on those ideas and those priorities. So I'm waiting for a swathe of developers to, to rush the chat and, and ask a whole bunch of stuff about application platform. On-prem and cloud. So uh, this is going to be focused mostly on Domino. Um, SCN will probably come into focus after Domino 10, but the primarily focus, the primary focus from an HCL and an IBM perspective is we need to deliver Domino 10 in 2018. So when you say 2018, that's December the 93rd, right? Mm -hmm. We're looking at second half. Obviously, we don't have a date set because we're just planning things now. And, you know, it's kind of funny. I asked the Domino team uh, last week, I said, you know, when we went from eight to nine, um, what did we, you know, how long did it take to kind of come up with the feature set and, and roadmap and all that? And he said, a year. And I said, okay, we have two months and a third of the team that we did then, so let's go. So that's kind of, uh, you know, where we're, where we're at now. Okay, uh, next question. Thank you for that question, Ray. Um, so the next question comes from Roberto Boccadoro. Uh, will there be a beta program like for previous versions? I'd love to test the new versions and give feedback. Yep, I, I think that is part of the plan. Um, I think we're, uh, we will talk about those type of things as well at the jam. But yes, uh, we definitely want to put out a quality product. We want expert feedback. And so there most likely will be a beta program. Fantastic. So there will be a base of awesome good stuff. Um, so Tio has come back with another question. Domino and notes, right? Or domino yeah. only? Domino and notes. Domino mm. and notes. Okay. Um, I'll let others ask questions before I plow in with mine. <laughs> um, can, okay, so thank you for that. Richard Moy uh, has come in with, can IBM share strategy on what role Domino will play in the IBM ecosystem that they play, uh, that they plan to focus on, I guess? Uh, it seems that it always collides with other products that IBM gives priority. Yeah, I think that's a good question. You know, I think you'll see a lot of this come through at starting at the jams of what our themes and what our emphasis and what our strategy is going to be. It is going to be interesting going forward because now that HCL, HCL is in the picture, um, there may be some things that we do differently than what we did when we were uh, strictly under the IBM development um, wing. And it will be interesting to see how, what HCL's, what HCL's view going forward of uh, how we play and how we integrate and how we uh, strategize against other products. But that's kind so of the point, though, Barry, right, is that HCL don't have that baggage, as it were, and they can focus on um, Domino because that's kind of all that that team got to do, right? Yeah, I mean, that is the idea. The, the difference here is because HCL now has – um, a stake in the revenue where they want to spend their money and their development resources with our direction. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that relationship shakes out in terms of, for example, right, I'm just going to throw this out there. 
Watson workspace integration, right? Um, HCL does not make revenue off of Watson workspace. So their incentive <clears throat> from the Node's Domino portfolio is to increase revenue. So if they, why would they invest development resources in something that would not increase their revenue? So there's going to be interesting things and intersections going forward of what is in IBM's best interest versus what is in HCL's best interest and how do we navigate that. These, and, and, you know, I'm using these as examples. These are things that haven't come up. We haven't made decisions, but these are going to be interesting points of discussion going forward. Okay. So that leads us on to the, the, the whole other raft of questions about how the deal structure and all the rest of it so that we can understand, um, you know, how this works. But I guess we'll leave that for the, for the end if we have time. Um, so Martin Davis has come in with, is Domino 10 a real name? Are we now away from the Domino 9 fix pack X nomenclature? Domino 10 is a real name. We have not decided uh, if we're going to go back to the feature packs. We like the feature packs because it is an agile way to deliver features between releases. The debate now is, so Domino 10 is real. That's probably going to be the name, Domino and Notes 10 in the market. Um, we're, uh, we're deciding whether we want to do a 10.1 or we want to do a 10. feature pack. We haven't decided that yet. So that will probably be some of the questions that we ask at the jams. You know, is it important to have a 10.1 or 10.0.1, or is are you okay with feature pack, right? Um, it, so those are kind of, we'll probably have to sort some of those things out with your help at the jam. This is Zufi, one additional comment. The feature pack 10, as, as we talked about also, is still going to happen as feature pack 10. There's no change to that. Mm -hmm. That's a 2017 mm -hmm. deliverable, which is unrelated to any version 10 in 2018. Good point. So that's just been asked um, by Matteo in the, in the chat. So um, yeah, that's that's good that you've answered that, Ufi. So another one from the chat there, actually, um, from, I hope I'm going to say this right, uh, Sachin Chawan. Um, what will be the plan of IBM selling the notes and domino? Because uh, many HCL customers have already migrated to Office 365. So, I mean, I, I think from it's nothing's going to change from the sales perspective. Ufi and the team at IBM are still going to sell notes to Domino. Um, it may shift because when, and you will kind of see this through the jams and validate it through the jams, if we're going to shift focus from, say, mail to application development platform, right? There may be a shift in focus, but it's still going to be the IBM sales team that will be selling this product. Yeah, that, let me, this is Sufi, let me add to that. I mean, no, no matter how we look at it, um, and if, if you look through the IBM list of our top customers, if you go through, uh, you know, anywhere in the world, but certainly in, 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 in Europe, all the top IBM customers, which are basically also all the top customers, top businesses in, in each of the various countries, they all are using Notes and Domino in one form or another. Some are running mail and applications. Some have moved their mail to Office 365 for whatever reason. Some are using applications only. There is a mixed bag of things there, and I'm sure it's going to continue exactly the same way. HCL is, is certainly also looking at, at you know, the, the customer base in, in, in what they are, and they're both applications and mail there, and, and both is an extremely viable business. And, and there's no intention of changing anything around that. There may be a change in, in focus because we may view the future as, as having you know, different aspects, like the question also that Theo asked about, is notes included? I mean, you ask a lot of good questions. What is, what is, what is the desktop in 2020, or in 2025, or in 2030? What does that desktop look like? What is the ambiance that people work in? What should we focus on from a client viewpoint, a client interface viewpoint? Those are the questions that will come up in the jam and will help us try to shape where we're going with this, whether it's email applications or email and applications. Yeah, great point. Um, right, so uh, 
could do okay so uh Honya, uh Bo Peterson has asked uh, could you ask what their thought thoughts are about the notes client now I know for you and I had a long discussion about this um a lot of his customers are asking him and I know that a whole bunch of our BCC customers are asking us too at this time we have no intent of discontinuing the notes client we have uh, active features in the roadmap if you look at my deck from MW lug um, where we were talking about the feature pack cadence because we had announced the partnership with HCL and the intent to do a domino 10 I know uh, at that conference Ed kind of hinted at the thoughts because we had actually started the discussions uh, at that time um, but <clears throat> so a lot of the features that are in my deck from FP, you know, in backlog on the server and on the client will be incorporated into Notes Domino 10. So, you know, there will be new development, there will be new features, there will be new things in the Notes client. The question is, going forward, what is the emphasis, right? So I'll give you an example. When I say what is the emphasis, let's just kind of take this as an example. Today, from an investment perspective in terms of resources, we have 80% of the team on the mail side and 20% of the team on the server and app dev. We may want to shift those resources and those priorities to focus more on the server and app dev side in the future, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to be developing a notes client or adding things to notes client. It may just be a little bit of shifting of, of what we emphasize going forward. And, and a lot of this will be coming out at the jams, and we'll be talking about it in further details at the jams and what our thoughts are. So somebody said um, not discontinuing is not the same as not improving. Or, or There will be it. I will tell you this. In Notes Domino 10, there will be new features and improvements in the Notes client. Okay. Does that include a new platform that isn't Eclipse-based? Well, that's on the table. We're everything is on the table right now. So that is one of the things that we're thinking about. Um, I don't know if we can achieve that in the top, in the in the ten time frame, but post ten, that is something that we're looking at and considering. Okay. Uh, next question from Richard Moy um, from the MW Lug fame um, that you mentioned your slide deck was from. Uh, will marketing be separated from the current IBM marketing? Uh, let me just add to that. Will there be marketing for Notes and Domino 10? <laughs> uh, if I have anything to do with it, yes. And, and you know, so marketing is definitely part of this. Marketing is part of IBM, ICS division. Uh, I, uh, I think that there's going to be, don't get your hopes up, but there <laughs> is going to be marketing around respect uh, superhuman commercials and, you know, things like that on TV, but I think that there is going to be a marketing effort around this. You can see already with the jams, you can kind of see that starting uh, to occur where they're having, they're going to have campaigns and they will have, uh, you know, uh, some marketing around it. What that actually means, is it a 10-page ad in the New York Times on Sunday? Probably not. You know, we're going to have to deal with the resources and the budget that we have, but this is something that both HCL and IBM really understand that in order to be successful here, we have to have marketing behind this. Okay. Um, so, uh, seeing as I, <laughs> as I poked the, um, the the hornet's nest over in the chat there, um, somebody has actually asked, um, what about development? Uh, will X pages still be in use, or are you discontinuing it? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, no final decision has been made on that. There's no intent to discontinue, you know, uh, anything. What we may do is de-emphasize, if that makes sense. So um, we actually have a, and I, probably some of you on this uh, who are attending today have gotten an email from me this morning. Uh, we're having a, a specific um, workshop um, by invite only. Uh, a week from tomorrow, specifically on X pages, to try to look at, you know, what are the things that we need to do um, from a feature perspective for Tim. So, I mean, we're actively looking at everything uh, and deciding: do we have a roadmap? Do we um, keep just keep the plate spinning? What are the important things? So, it's kind of all in the mix now. I don't want, you know, it, nothing is solidified or no final decision has been made, but we are looking at X pages specifically 
to determine what our next steps are there. So. Okay, so um, I need to be careful how I ask this next question. Um, <laughs> uh, will this resurrect open sourcing the code for core X pages classes and more work on extension library, e.g. the non iNotes calendar widget, Bootstrap 4 as beta and that kind of stuff? I bet you can't guess who wants that question, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'm... Barry, we appear to have lost your voice. Buffy, can you hear Barry? Uh, yeah, no, I cannot hear Barry. I think Barry's voice disappeared. I don't know what happened. Um, but but I, I, I'd say again that, that uh, as Barry just said, the, uh, uh, the, the whole question of, of where we're going with X pages is also part of the workshop that Barry's creating right now, and also some discussion points for the Domino 2025 uh, jams. Um, the whole balance between, you know, open sourcing uh, activities, I mean, yes, that, that'll be an outcome of, of all of the strategy work. Um, I do not know uh, a, a, a precise answer to that question, but, but, but it's part of what's being discussed. Okay. Um, Barry, did you want Ant to finish your statement? Are you there still? Yes, no, Barry? No, I think we may have lost me, Barry's audio. Let me ping Barry separately here and see what happened to him in a second. If I can get hold of him. Come on, system. Thank you. So while you're doing that, Ophie, I'm going to try and ask you another question at the same time, see if you can multitask. Uh, um, uh, can you guys hear me now? Ah, now we can hear you, Barry. Okay. I'm sorry, my headset died. I have to go get the plug. So <laughs> That's what happens when you're on calls all the time. But I did, I did hear what Ufi said, so um, I, I don't think we can answer that question right now. Let's kind of give it a little bit of time, see what comes out of the jam, see what comes out of the uh, this X Pages workshop. Barry, we lost you again. Yeah, your headset is not too good. Your mm. plug is not too good. Let's see. Can you guys hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay. So yeah, I I don't want, I don't think I can answer that question now. I think Ufi answered that properly. We'll we'll see what comes out of the workshops and the and the jams. Cool, awesome. Um, so one question that's come in from the chat is that uh, some customers are worried about the future of HCL and the India development side of this. Um, now I know you know from having looked at some of this stuff that HCL are a massive multinational company. They work in yeah, it's 30 something countries around the world. They posted, what was it, seven point something billion dollars of turnover last year. They're not a small company, right? Yeah. No, by far, it's, it's a huge company running many, many, you know, outsourcing businesses on top of their software partnerships that they have. Uh, it's not their first development partnership with IBM. We have another set of partnerships going, which is why we know that this can work because we have some very good experience in working with HCL in, in, in partnership. So, but it, it, this is not a fly-by-night company. It's not a five-man outfit. It's a multi-billion dollar multinational company. And then one of the first four, as I remember it, garage um, development houses that came out of India, and they're 40 years old already. So it's not like they're going anywhere soon, right? They've been around for a while. They know how to survive. They've been through the 80s. They've come out the other side. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I actually, do you know what? Um, I don't have any issue with HCL doing the development because I don't know if anybody's seen uh, the anonymous blog that's been started. Um, it's not anonymous, anonymous anymore because I started it. It's dominoforever.com. Um, I put in there that I think we've seen this before. This is just the wheel going round again. We've seen this with um, uh, Lotus spinning out the development to Iris now. That was for a different reason. But the the messages and, and the mechanisms of development were still the same. So Lotus owned the product management of the products, and then they had Iris, a separate company for legal reasons, do the development. But they weren't, you know, they were just contracted almost to deliver, deliver code for Lotus. Um, Lotus owned the marketing and the selling and all the rest of it and the support of it. It's just that Iris did the dev work. Now I see personally, I see this as kind of a respin of that wheel, um, and we're seeing HCL being brought in to do the development. Um, but it's, you know, I, 
I don't see it being much different than that in terms of what we will see as customers and partners, to be honest. Barry, Uffi, any comment on that? No, I think, oh, I think it's, it's, it's an interesting, interesting comparison uh, for different reasons, but yes, same setup. No, I think uh, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I, I, you know, that's we're doing this because both sides see the value in this product, and HCL is not in this to just keep things spinning. They want to increase revenue, so I mean, they got skin in the game, so they want this to be a success as well. So they bought in, as I understand it, and, and a lot of people can see some of this detail on dominoforever.com. Um, as I understand it, they've bought a license to use the source code, right? Which means that they've actually paid money to get into this business. And whilst IBM will still own the intellectual property, that means that HCL can create their own products, right? Based on the source code that IBM is going to give them access to, right or wrong? Right, but they cannot go create a competitor to Notes or Domino. Sure, because that would be dumb, right? Because that would sour right. their relationship with IBM. And it would cut into the revenue that yeah. they're making from, from this, so but, but they don't want to sacrifice but, but, that. Yeah, but, but, but what you said, which is very important, this is a partnership. It is not IBM outsourcing anything. It's not you know IBM just giving it up. It is a partnership on yeah. building this business together. They are a big company with profit targets as everybody else. Uh, they do not go do things lightly because they actually also have a, some very active shareholders that they need to please. So it, 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 this is just very serious business for both of us. And, and, and I know that a lot of people are belittling it by saying that you know it's an outsourcing deal or we're giving up. None of that is true. It's a partnership. And, and both partners are equally interested in making this very successful. Both partners bring things to the table. Yes, HCL has acquired uh, a, a, a license from, from IBM for this, so we have lots of skin in the game, all of us. Okay, so somebody said, and I'm gonna read this verbatim so that you guys can answer this verbatim. Ask what I should tell customers who say they need something more concrete to go on when it comes to IBM's strategy and roadmap for Notes Domino. They need to take actions and decisions for the 2018 budget and also their future strategy. I'm trying to stall them. So, I mean, if you're on active s and S, then what's the decision to be made? You'll get the, the, I mean, you'll have access to that new code when it's available. The key here is that, uh, you know, just like everything else in Notes Domino, this is not stopping. This is, you know, as soon as we have the roadmap, that's when we have the roadmap. We don't want to put something out there prematurely and commit to something and then come back and say, well, that's not what we really meant. We really meant this. You know, so I would say, listen, that there's a lot of changes that are going on. We are committed to putting out a full new release in the second half of 2018. We've got to get through the jams. If they want to have input, the jam is the place to do that. We are open to customer feedback uh, to make this a collaborative effort, and uh, that's when we'll have a, a roadmap. And, and the other thing I'd like to say is, from an OM perspective, I've been trying to lead this a little bit, you know, for our customers is that we're, IBM is moving to Agile. And so the old time of when you had a roadmap that had like four years and every single feature on it exactly when it was going to be delivered, that is no longer the case, right? And so uh, in order for us to be able to deliver these these the software to you in a quick and agile manner, we have backlogs. And so when it's done, it's done. So we have epics and we have user stories. And then, you know, what we can fit into Sapphire, we'll fit into Sapphire. What we can fit into 10.1 or Feature Pack 1, we'll get into Feature Pack 1, we'll go into 10.2. So as you've kind of seen with the roadmaps that I've shown is we have what we've got committed and then we've got our backlog. And that's how we'll continue to show the roadmap going forward. So. You know, be patient with us. Look at the last roadmap that we showed. The backlog items in that roadmap are most likely the features that are going to go into Sapphire with a little bit of tweaking, with a lot of addition as well, because that's a very limited set based on what we actually want to do with a full release, because that was based on feature pack cadence. Um, so, you know, I, 
I would say look at what we've got now. We will have a roadmap soon, but this is going to be a, a process that we're going to go through with our customers, with our sellers, with our business partners to make sure we do this correctly. So can I just clarify, Sapphire is Domino Notes 10, right? Yep, that was the code name. If you remember, we, we, we decided to go to code names uh, with the feature packs. We are using semi-precious gems. So Mystic Topaz is FP10. <laughs> we, we said uh, Sapphire is, don't laugh, that's a great name. But Mystic <laughs> Topaz. Have you been playing World of Warcraft again? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was cool. So when you look at semi-precious stones, there aren't that many cool choices. So um for 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 a uh, a feature pack, but um, so sapphire is as a precious stone, and that's what we're you know we're code naming uh, Note Domino Ten. So okay, so in real terms, how long do you think it's going to take the HCL developers to get up to speed to be able to expand the current IBM data resources? Because you know everyone knows that reading somebody else's code is really painful. Yep. No, that's a great question. You know, I know that um, they are working on that now. They're working on backfilling positions now. Obviously, it will take some time. And I, and I want to be, the, the goal here is that we increase the velocity, but let's be realistic that the very beginning, it may ha we may see a little bit of a decrease in velocity because they're getting their, these guys have to move to new physical locations. They have to use new laptops. They have to get use new systems. They have to rebuild the systems that they had at IBM over there. So there is going to be a small transition period where things may be a little bit <clears throat> rough. But the goal is, is we, you know, we start delivering with velocity as soon as we, we get through that. And and the idea is that there will be additional resources hired. When, where, how long that takes, I don't know. That's on the development side. So you'll have to ask someone like Richard Jeffs or someone on the HCL side, those type of questions. This is Sufi adding a comment that also because also remember that some the, the key architects and some key developers are still the same people. That's yeah. not changing. So, yep. so I mean, the knowledge and skills on, on what this is and what the code looks like still is, is with the product, it hasn't changed. They just right. get more resources focusing on it and getting those resources on board takes time. Absolutely. Yep. And, and, and OM has to prioritize where we want. So part of this effort and this, this exercise is going, of going through the jam will help to inform where do we need said resources. Do we need them on the notes client side? Do we need them on X pages? Do we need them on uh, improving the platform? Do we need them on security? So a lot of this jam exercise prior to prioritization exercise will inform what type of resources we need to go out and, and hire. So, you know, I would say, because the, the date uh, where it, the IBM, the IBM resources transfer over to ACL is December 1st. So, you know, Next year, you will you will start seeing new hiring and, and, and all of that, new people coming on board. Okay, so uh, what's the cohesive message about Domino? You know, is is there one sentence that we can use in front of customers that makes sense and isn't going to just be a bunch of waffle that they can ignore and move on? You can now feel confident that Domino is going to be around for a long, long time and fully supported and with a future product with a roadmap as well and not just feature packs. So what that means is from a support perspective, there's no more date to worry about. When is Domino going to end? Take that off the table, right? So now we can focus on making this the most awesome product that we can for the market. We don't have to worry about, uh, are we going to be around tomorrow? Are we going to be losing developers? No, we are in a really solid, steady state. And honestly, this is probably the most optimistic I've ever been uh, in this position in terms of the future of this product going forward. Awesome. So, Barry, I know that you've presented your your roadmap slides previously. Would you be able to send me the roadmap slide so I can put that up on the um, yeah? I'll, I'll put it into the um, I'll put it into the um, 
uh, the the presentation when we deliver this uh, onto YouTube as a as a image. But if I could add that to the the X page, uh, sorry, to the X pages <laughs> to the um, the website, that would be great uh, if we could just put a PDF of that up there for people to refer to. Yep. What I will do is I'll send you the PDF of the roadmap that I delivered at MW Lug. And okay. we'll just use that as a reference, not because it's going to be current with P10 and, 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 you know, the future set beyond, but just in your imagination, think it's plus, right? So that's not, right. that's a subset of what will actually be in 10. It's not everything. Obviously, we have to have a full 10 release. So there's a lot more than what we had just planned for the next feature pack. Sure. Okay. Right. Next question. Um, oh, blimey. But Shocking all my time, which is awesome. Um, uh, so, this could be a little contentious. So I'm warning you up front. Um, is it possible that there would be a complete rewrite of the Notes client code and eliminate so many of the retro compatibility issues? Um, and would that be the right solution? Not finished yet. 64-bit clients, for example, delete Eclipse, um, or is this pure science fiction? Um, but is that at all possible? Yeah, I think like like I said, I mean, we're open we're open to everything. This is a complete reexamination of everything from top to bottom. And obviously something that's come up a lot is get rid of Eclipse. So what we're thinking, you know, and here's what I'm gonna share on this is we're thinking about what is the next and Ufi said it well, is what does the desktop look like in 2020, 2025, 2030? So it may be something like, hey, we we instead of having a notes client without Eclipse, we just go to um, you know, uh, an electron client. Um, and so you, if you want a thick desktop client that has Eclipse and you need that, you can do that. If you want something that's light or lighter that is not Eclipse based, we can move that to an electron client with say a verse interface with ICAA built into it. So you've got your mail and application uh, and then maybe you've got some same time or some sort of instant messaging uh, connection or capability in that as well. So these are things that we're looking at because it's really about what is the problem that we're trying to solve um, and then what's the best way to do that. So is it just decouple um, Eclipse or is it, hey, do we want to do an electron client? So these are, ty these are the type of questions that we'll be asking at the jam for beyond Domino 10, what is the best path forward. What does the market want? What do our customers want? Um, so, but all of this stuff is on the table. The problem with 10 is that it's just such a short uh, uh, road or runway to get to. We, it's pretty much going to be, you know, status quo with, a, with, with some tweaks to, to set up for the next one to, to, to make this long-term strategy work, right? Because like I said, we're in this for the long haul. HCL is in this for a long haul. It's not just about 10. It's about 10 and beyond. This is Sophie. that may I have a and come in also to that because also think about that, you know, when the notes client, when well, the whole notes client server stuff was conceived, the world looked different, very, tech, very <laughs> different technically in terms of, of bandwidth and so forth. Look at the world right now and think about what dockerization can do, containerization of server capabilities. And maybe the thing about having a serverless you know, client server environment is, is more what we look or, or it's, it's, a, it's a viable viable solution because one of the things a lot of people use the notes client for is offline and being able to run your applications mail etc offline or, or at least with, with a, a slower connection not everybody is that well connected constantly put people in ships put people in space etc 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 uh, and 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 maybe there's a whole complete new model on on actually the server being the thing that's distributed, and the user interface can manifest itself in many 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 ways. Electron client being one thing, but but you know, so a again, what does this look like in 2025 and onwards? What are the things we should target? Comes to the channel. Yep. Okay, so I'd echo that. I mean, there's a lot of people telling me what they want in the chat and stuff, and, uh, and the Q and A, and and that's stuff that should go into the um, that stuff that should go into the jam. And I urge you all to be part of that. So, one of the questions that's come through is Barry, when you talk about ten, is that six pack ten? And we'll get back. I've got a supplementary question on that. Or are you talking about Domino and Notes ten? Uh, Domino note, uh, Domino notes ten. Okay, cool. Um, so you did mention Fix Pack Ten earlier. Um, do you have a an idea of a release date for that? Because like, there's not long left, yeah. right, this year. No, yeah. 
That's a great question. So we're, we're, we're hammering that out this week in these meetings. There, there may be a slight change to the schedule. <laughs> so what we're thinking. <laughs> so let me, let me qualify this. We will release an FP10 in t this year, but it may be a beta. <laughs> okay, so in true, ad uh, you're not going to do. You like how I did that? You like how I did that? Was you're not going to do. You're going to do proper agile then and say, hey, we need to get it out by this day. Just drop a bunch of stuff then, right? No. So here's the thing. So FP10 is primarily the platform update with a couple of other things in it. So we've been debating. That's the piece that's just been so difficult to um, to work. It's just such a big piece of work. Um, so the idea that we came up with is we wanted to do a beta anyways. We have to do a beta, and we were going to only make it a one- or two-week beta in order to release it. And it's like, what's the point of having a beta if it's only out there for one or two weeks? So You're breaking up again, Barry. You might need to plug your headset back in. Okay. Any better? I'm kind of close. Enough. Yeah, much better. Okay. So, uh, you know... Uh, open or closed, that's a good question. I'll have to go back to the team. I think it is going to be an open beta because we are going to tweak the release schedule. Um, but, you know, so we want to make sure that this is released right. It's not bad code. So the compromise was we'll just, we were planning on releasing a beta anyways. We will just release a beta and extend the time, and then we will release the, the gold in January. So it's going to be a couple-week delay for the gold release, but there will be a beta that we will release publicly. I think it's going to drop soon, within the next two weeks. I'll, I'll get some more information on that, Tim, and I'll let you know today or tomorrow. Okay. I, I they're, they're wrapping stuff up this week to get the beta out. Awesome. So what I'll do is when Barry sends that out to me, I'll put that on our Twitter stream. So make sure you follow at IconUK underscore, um, because that's our Twitter handle, um, and you'll see that news when it comes out. Um, yep. So. Uh, right, so another thing that's come up is, are you guys going to focus on Verse to make it feature, you know, full? Because, you know, both cloud and on-prem are min missing a bunch of things that our competitors yeah. have got, and which is why customers are going away and not listening to the Verse sort of argument much, to be honest. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I would say with this, uh, with for the near future, the focus is going to be VOP versus on-prem. So VOP 1.0.3 will be coming out in December. Um, that is that is solid. I don't have the exact date. I, I think it's going to be probably second half of December. I think uh, I'll have to circle back with those guys today. But we do have a December, solid December release date for 1.0.3. That will have the um, delegation, um, and we are working mm -hmm. Yep, so it will be both counter and mail delegation. We are working to get the same time integration piece solidified for that. That may also slip, but what will happen is that we will release a tech note within uh, a month of release st stating, okay, now it's fully supported, it's fully tested. Um, so, because that capability was put in in the 1.0.2 code, code stream, we just need to follow through and finish all of our same time testing. Uh, to, to make sure that it's fully supported. Um, awesome. So we are looking at, that is our thing, you know, what what are the top, and we'll, this is part of the jam as well, and I know I keep going back to that, but what are those top five to ten features that we need to prioritize to make this an enterprise ready? After 1.0.3 comes out with delegation, what are those top next things that you guys need? So, yes, we are in going to be investing in VOP. We are going to be adding those things um, to to VOP and then back to the cloud, um, but we want your help to tell us what are those items that we need to do first and prioritize to, to make it enterprise ready. Okay, so another question's coming, I don't know if you can see it, is how about more integration between connections and verse, uh, like you have in notes and connections plugins? I want to not ask that question, I think it's a valid question, but I want to uh, spread that out a little bit further actually, because People may not have noticed that the connections development and support has not been transferred to HCL. So any integrations that we had seen previously between things like connections allowing same time to show up or connections mail um, hooking back into verse, 
how's that all going to work? How are you going to get the HCL teams to work back with the connections team and make sure all of the integration stuff that you're doing between that feature set of products and the others that HCL are doing is going to work? Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great question. And I think that kind of goes to my statement earlier where it will be interesting to see where we invest in terms of the um, in terms of in terms of the, the connectivity and the interoperability between the products, because, like I said, HCL does not have a revenue incentive to make Verse work with Watson Workspace or Pink or Connections, because when it was all under ICS under one wing, we all shared the revenue. It was all right. We just want to make this brand big, but now it's a little bit of a separation there. So there will be some decisions that may be made to not do further integrations because of that. I don't know. I'm just anticipating how this is going to, to roll out. Because remember, HDL, <clears throat> their goal is to increase the notes domino revenue. They're, they don't get a cent if, if they do anything with Watson Workspace or Connections or anything like that. So we have to be cognizant of that as well. So it may affect things going forward. I don't know. Certain things like live grid and things like that that we've already been talking about, I don't think in the near term will change. It's really going to be like the long term, how, how that how that progresses long term. I, I really don't know. Okay. Um, and there's another question come in. Um, will all these brands be under a separate group within IBM? So I think that's an interesting question from Richard Moy. Are you guys going to rebrand ICS? again or are you keeping it the same so that customers keep trust in it um, or are you doing something else that would be uh, Ed Brill or in he question I honestly <laughs> that's above my pay grade oh um, come on Uffy you must have an opinion on this I don't I, again it's, it's exactly as as, uh, as Barry says uh, Good question to ask, Amy. But, but if you're really quiet, sorry. Okay, is this better? Wow, yeah, very loud now. That's good. Okay. So, so sorry. Uh, so, 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 it's a question for Amy, I think. But, 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 I mean, uh, we have been changing brand names many, many, many times. <laughs> the things we have not changed is Notes and Domino. That still remains do Notes and Domino. And whether it comes from ICS or ICTS or ESS or whatever it's called, I, I do not think it matters that much. Um, it comes from IBM, and it's branded IBM Notes and IBM Domino, and that's not going to change. Okay. Awesome. So uh, I think we're going to go for the last question now. Um, uh, thank you, everyone, for your questions. But this is, is going to be the last one, unless there's a whole raft of really good ones that come into the chat now. So this is your last chance, folks. Um, do you see a continued use of the IBM JVM moving forward on the Domino server, or is it possible to use a more standardized Sun JVM in the future? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great question. I actually asked Ron that question yesterday. <laughs> Uh, and I said, why don't we, why are we have our own JVM? Because it's a lot of work every time we put out a new release to update this JVM. It's, it's, it's a lot of development work. And so his response to me was, every time there's a new version of Java, it could break something. And this way we control the release that's running in our code. You're breaking up, Barry. We're losing this important message. Okay. I'm sorry. I, it's probably my headset. Is that any better? Much better. Okay, um, so I think what I, what I was saying is I spoke to Ram about this specifically yesterday, and the reason that we have a JVM embedded in the code is so that we can control the the way that it works. So every time there's a new version of Java, it could break our, our our applications, and so by embedding it in the code, we have control over that, so that new versions don't break things and continue the backwards compatibility. That's the reason that we have the embedded Java in Domino. Because every time Sun or someone else puts out a new version of Java, if we just went by that, we don't have uh, any leeway or testing into that so it could break things. Um, so I, I asked that question specifically, and that's, that's the technical reason of why we have our own version of Java embedded into the product. Awesome. Right, so I haven't had a flood of questions come in. I think we've had some great questions this afternoon. Um, I, I think this has been a very valuable session. I want to thank you both for your time um, and to Chris and Leon who have helped set up this call this month. Um, 
any questions that you would like to ask the audience, guys? Goofy, you go first. <laughs> well, it, it, the only thing I really ask people is that, that you know, please, it, it's not a question I, I, I could get a response to right now, but please join the, the Domino 2025 jams when, when, when venues and locations and invites go out because it is absolutely critically important that this community gives us their feedback. We need it in order to shape the right thing going forward. We are absolutely intent on this is, as Barry said, this is a perpetual thing. There's absolutely no end date on this. It is going onwards, and we need to know what this looks like in 2025, what it looks like in 2030, and, and certainly 2025, we need to start building now and understand where that should be going. Version 10 is just the first step in that direction. So the strategy is going to 2025. The first deliverable on that strategy is Notes Domino version 10 in 2018. And, and um, I, I, I truly hope that, that, that people agree that uh, doing the partnership with HCL can really allow us to build this stuff. And when we all work together in exactly the same way as we're inviting people to work together with us on the PINK strategy for connections, PINK is designed with customers and partners, so will Domino 10 and onwards be designed with customers and partners because in this modern world, uh, we don't sit in an ivory tower to decide. We have to work together, so please join. Awesome. Barry? No, I just uh, hope everything is, uh, you know, this is an exciting time in the space. We're, from an offering management perspective, we're really busy, but this is what we love to do, and we want to make this a product of success, and so we appreciate all of your, your input. We appreciate uh, the fact that you guys are, you know, still with us and still here, and, uh, and I hope that it just goes up from here, and if you have any questions, or customers that need clarification or are demanding to see a roadmap, you know, just send me a note and we'll see what we can do to, to help you and accommodate that. If anybody needs Barry's uh, personal email address, let me know. I can. <laughs> um, I can give you. Not his, my home, my business. Uh, yeah, no, okay. I can. Yeah, you can. Um, I, I can furnish people with your business email address um, if they need it. Okay. Um, or, t or Twitter. Yeah, fine, absolutely. Um, listen, guys, thank you very much. Um, as and when Barry sends me his roadmap, his release date for Fixed Back 10, and the release date for Verse on Premise, I will make those available through our website and through our Twitter stream. Um, so, Barry, there's three actions on you, I'm afraid, man. Um, yep. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Chris, for explaining the deal. Um, and listen, guys, everyone on the call, if your customers are asking awkward questions about Notes and Domino 10 and where it's going, get them and their IT managers and their IT directors along to the Domino Jam when it comes to their town. Because if they don't participate, then they can't complain. All right? Um, that would be my message to everyone. Make sure that you get those customers and partners who bleat at you quite a lot. Make sure you get them engaged and make sure you get them involved. Because if they want something to happen, they've got to, they've got to get engaged with this. Okay, so that would be my recommendation. I'd like to invite you all um, to join us next uh, month, um, Thursday, December the 14th for our December Around the Table from Icon UK, which will actually be Around the Table with Icon UK, who are, will be in Germany. Um, but don't worry about that. We will still have um, good service from the German office. Um, Thank you all for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's been a great discussion. Thank you, Uffi. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Chris. Anytime. Thanks, guys. Um, Thank you. It just leaves for me to wish you all um, happy Thanksgiving if you're in America, um, because I won't see you before then. Um, and see us next time on uh, Around the Table with Icon UK. Thank you.